Hey guys, it's me Paco, and you're watching Bad Witch Books. Before we start today's video, I want to talk about how it is now after the election. And just a quick moment to process. And I know we are all having very strong emotions right now. And that this page will forever be a safe place for BIPOC, queer women. Um, make it abundantly clear we don't support that ideology, that man. That this page is for that. And that we have to remember in these dark moments that giving in to despair is what they want. And that we have to be able to find our joy. I just want to give that quick announcement that we have to remember to be happy. And that I know it's going to be hard to find joy in moments like this. But joy is a form of resistance. So don't feel shame for any moments that you that something makes you happy don't feel shame for that for how dark things are right now and that this is a place for people but yeah just wanted to give that quick announcement before we get to today so today. today we are going to be doing my october haul so in the month of october i acquired 10 books i had a lot there was a lot of um releases this month a lot of these are new releases but so yeah, we're going to get to it because we did get a lot in October. I actually haven't had a month like this in a while. I've been somewhat on a book buying ban. And so it was fun to like buy books like almost once every week at least. So let's get to it. So the first two books we're going to talk about are books that I'm currently reading. And that is The Dagger and the Flame by Catherine Doyle. This is a Barnes & Noble exclusive edition because it's their, Barn their book club edition. So it comes with these um, end papers. And I think that's the only, is it the same on both sides? Yeah, so it's the same on both sides. And it's like this skitty scape, and you see our two characters on the rooftop. Now, let's get into the synopsis, shall we? In the dark underbelly of a beautiful city, two rival gang members are pitted against each other in a deadly game of duty and revenge, in which the most dangerous mistake is falling in love. In Fantime, the kingdom of cobbled streets, flickering lamplights, beautiful bridges, and secret catacombs, shade magic is scarce and a deadly commodity. Um, controlled by two enemy guilds, the cloaks and the daggers, the thieves and the assassins. One night of her, on the night of her mother's murder, 17-year-old Sarah Finn runs for her life. Seeking sanctuary with the cloaks, Sarah is set on revenge. But her secret abilities, a match for the dark-haired is her secret abilities, a match for the dark-haired boy whose quick silver eyes follow her around the city. Nothing compares Sierra for the moment she finally comes face to face with Ransom, heir to the Order of the Daggers. And Ransom is shocked to discover that this unassuming pardon girl wields a strange and blazing magic he has never seen before. As the cloaks and daggers grapple the control of Phantom's underworld, Sarah and Ransom are consumed by the push and pull of their magic and the deadly spark and terrible vengeance that keeps drawing them back together. I am like 11% into this book and I really can't say much about it. I don't have an opinion fully on it. But I'm reading this for my book club that I'm a member of. My RRL book club. But yeah. The next book is another book I'm reading. I don't have a book... Since I'm, like, reading it, but this is the dust jacket. It is, um, Phantasmo. Phantasma by Kaylee Smith. This is, like, all over BookTube. This is all over BookTube, and it is... And BookTok and whatever. And it is a dark romanticy, i.e. Caravel vibes, is what I'm told. I am currently reading this. Um, I got this from Book of the Month, but I did not get Book of the Month. One of the people I'm in a book club with has book of the month and once I found this was our hardcover I was like hey can you think you could use one of your points to get me this and she did so we traded books for it so Phantasma only has two rules stay alive and don't fall in love when Ophelia discovers her mother is brutally murdered there is no time to grieve she has inherited the fan family's fearsome magic and numerous debt circumstances go from dire to deadly however when ophidia's sister decides to pay off the loan by entering phantasma a competition which cons where consistence rarely escape alive and the victor is granted a single wish the only way for ophidia to save her sister is to win but phantasma is the cursed manor full of twisting corridors and lavish ballrooms staffed by enticing demons and fetal fiddle temptations and ophelia must conquer all nine floors to succeed if her fears don't overtake her when charming arrogant stranger Char 
Claims he can help her, Ophelia knows better than to trust him, but when her sister's life is on the line, Ophelia can't afford to turn him away. She'll just use need to ignore the overwhelming dark attraction, drawing them closer together. But in Phantasm, the only thing deadlier than losing the game is losing your heart. I am enjoying this. I'm like almost 200 pages in, and I'm really enjoying this read. It's fun, um, and I am very excited to finish it. About like almost halfway to, to it. Okay, so those are the books I'm reading. Let's get to the rest of the books now. Next, I bought Don't Let the Forest In. I saw, like, someone describe this on Goodreads, I think, or I forgot where they were talking about it, but I was like, sign me up. And this is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition, so it has these, like, spade pages. And it's got this, like, cool and papers. So. Um... High school senior Andrew Pearl f finds refuge in the twisted fairy tales that he writes for the only person who can ground him to reality, Thomas Rye. The boy with the provincially ink stand hands and hair like autumn leaves, but when his twin sister Dove inexplicably keep keeping him at a cold distance upon their return to Wickwood Academy, Andrew finds himself leaning on his. But when and with his and okay, sorry. Um, keeping him a cold distance upon their return to Whipwood Academy, Andrew finds himself leaning on his friend even more. But something strange is going on with Thomas. His abusive parents have mysteriously vanished, and he arrives at school with blood on his sleeves. Thomas won't say a word about it and shuts down whenever Andrew tries to ask him questions. Strange, there's still Thomas is haunted by something, and he seems to have lost interest in his artwork. Whimsically, McCrobb sketches of the monsters from Andrew's wicked stories. Desperate to figure out what's wrong with his friend, Andrew follows Thomas into the off-limits forest one night and catches him fighting a nightmare monster. Thomas drawings have come to life and are killing anyone close to him. To make sure no one else dies, the boys battles monsters every night. But as their obsession with each other grows stronger, so do the monsters. Andrew begins to fear that the only way to stop the creatures might be to destroy their creator. So, and I'm very excited to get to this. I think I'll be reading this next year, though, because of uh, things. This is going to be fun to see me pull these books from here. Raina is judging me. Behind the scenes fun. Okay. This is, should be the only one that's difficult to get out. The next book I have is Blood Over Bright Haven by Amaral Wong. This is a adult fantasy. This is the second book, I believe, by Emma Wong. I have not read um, her debut, Sword of Kaigen, which I think that's her debut. I could be wrong. But um, the first woman ever admitted to a prestigious order of mages unravels a secret conspiracy that could change the practice of magic forever in the standalone dark fantasy from the author of The Sword of Kaigen. For 20 years, Saikshan has devoted every waking moment to the study of magic, fueled by the mad desire to achieve the impossible. These are the first woman ever admitted to the high magistry at the University of Magics and Industry. When Saikshan finally passes the qualification exams and becomes a high mage, she finds her challenges have just begun, and her new colleagues... Her new colleagues are determined to make her feel unwelcome, and instead of a qualified lab assistant, they give her a janitor. When neither Silicon or her and nor her peers realize is that her attack team assistant was not always a janitor. Ten years ago, he was a nomadic hunter who lost his family on their per perilous journey from the wild plains to the city. But now he seems the opportunity to understand and the forces that decimated his tribe, drove him from the homeland, and keep the privilege in power. At first, Magic and Mage and Outsider have a factitious relationship, but working together, they undercover an ancient secret that could change the course of Magic forever. If it doesn't, you get them first. I'm very excited to read this. Um, I've heard nothing but, like, stellar things about this book, so I'm high-key excited. This is the, I don't know what it's special edition. It has, like, um, pretty ready pages, so love that. Okay, next book we have is Prince of Sorrows by Lisa Trinnell. Trinnell? This is a, a YA romanticy queer, so. And not all is fair in love and war. Shy Prince Edmund will be the great king one day. It has been seen again and again. With rare magic giving him dominion over plant and plants and weather, Edmund feels a great deal of pressure to live up to his nation's many expectations, including making a perfect diplomatic alliance through marriage. That is, until he meets Lord Audrey Astley. Charming, romantic, and politically insignificant, Aubrey is a seer. 
but he not but not even he could see have predicted catching the eye of the Edmund, the prince of fortune, or that the anxious prince who talks of plants more than people could feel so right for him. Audrey Vision dreams have been of full of battle, not love, but to say that Prince Edmund has captured his fantasy would be a grand underestimation. As the two become more and more entwined, the nation of Stephen falls under attack. War and dark sorcery looms over the horizon to save their home land. Edmund and Aubrey must resist the dark forces seeking to drive them apart and find the power within themselves to create a future for Sabin and each other they never could have imagined. Very excited to read this. I love it. Beautiful cover. Gorgeous. Mm hmm Next, we have Sword Cross by Freya Michelson. Marquisy. Mark Sky. I don't know why I said Michelson. That is clearly not that name. Um, someone's still in an original mode. Thank you. No. Um, this is the same author of... Uh, I forget. In, I don't know the series. It's a, it's a trilogy out now. Here. It's the cover of it. <laughs> but this has gorgeous straight edges. Not gorgeous, they're just nice free edges and interesting endeavors. What mistakes can I make today? We shall see. Um, Matthias, Jade, dutiful heir to his struggling family's business, needs to hire an experienced swordsman to serve as the best man for his arranged marriage. A sword challenge at the ceremony could destroy all hopes of restoring his family's wealth. Something that Mat Mat Matty. Maddie has been trying and failing to do for the past 10 years. But when he can, what can he, what he can afford, unfortunately, is a part-time con artist and a full-time charming menace, Luca Pierre. Luca, for his part, is trying to reinvent himself in the new city. All he wants to do is make some easy money and try to forget the crime he committed in his hometown. He didn't plan on being blackmailed into giving sword lessons to the chronically responsible and conveniently handsome wool merchant, like Matai. However, neither Matai's business troubles nor Luca's himself are quite what they seem. As Parv begins to cut, as the pair begins to cut through the knots of intrigue and sabotage that has brought Matai's house to the brink of ruin, Lucas begins to pierce the armor around Matai's guarded heart. But on the eve of Matai's Matt's wedding, when Lucas' secrets threaten their growing alliance, they will both have to answer one question: How many lies are you prepared to strip away? Where the truth could mean losing everything you want. This sounds like one of my favorite dynamics of relationship, which is like Batwoman, Catwoman dynamic of like person A is very like upstanding, responsible, no nonsense, and person B's main goal in life is to give person A a migraine. And this kind of sounds like that dynamic, so I'm excited. Did not know that. But I'm excited now. That is one of my favorite dynamics in a ship. Okay. We've got a couple more books. We're almost there. And next we got A Vile Season by David Fierno. Gorgeous cover. This is Bridgerton Needs Vampires. After being on the run for his of his castle by vampire hunters, Count Lucian encounters the god of vampires. I'm not pronouncing this. It's like Varkoskala. Was in hiding... While in hiding, unhappy with how many vampires have been bested by the hunters, the god gives Lucas a test. Infiltrate the future Duke's marriage game games as a suitor and undercover the clandestine vampire hunters. The god suspects that lurk in their midst. The god strips Lucius of his immortality so he can walk among mortals, making him human for the first time in centuries. If Lucius succeeds, the god will make him the most powerful vampire in existence. But if he fails, the god of vampires will torture him for the rest of his life. Unfortunately, Lucas isn't prepared for the emotions that come with humanity, nor the treacherous of courting season with fellow nobles posing as friends, enemies, and the wholly unsuitable romantic directions. To win the life he wants, Lucian will have to decide if being a vampire is worth giving up the friendship and love he found. Very excited to get into this. Love vampires. Love Bridgerton-like vibes. And this sounds really good. Next book is Legend of the White Snake by Shirley. This is a YA romanticy, a queer retelling of the Legend of the White Snake. When Prince Zan was a boy, a white snake bit his mother and condemned her to a slow death. Zion has never stopped looking for the only known cure in elusive spirit pearl, or the antidote created from a rare white snake itself. Desperate Zane travels to the city of Changalu when an oracle predicts he would find a white snake. Seven years earlier, Zian, a white snake stumbles across the spirit pearl, consuming it gave him the ability to change into human form. 
in Changul, Zane encounters an intriguing young man, Zin. The two become are drawn to each other, but it's because it comes clear that Zin that he he is a white snake, Zion sneaks. As their feelings grow, how much longer can Zin hide his true identity? It's very short, actually. But I'm very in excited to get to this. I've been this is one of my more anticipated reads of the year. Of like anticipated releases. Next we have the Nightmare Before Kishmet. Uh, Nicholas Cole Klaus Claus refuses used to love Christmas until his father, the reigning Santa, turned the holiday into a PR PR facade. Um, Cole will do anything to escape the spectacle, including getting tangled into a drunken, supremely hot makeout session with a beautiful man behind a seedy bar one night. But the heir to Christmas is soon commanded to do his duty. He will marry his best friend Iris, the Easter Princess, and his brother's not-so-secret crush, a situation that has disaster written all over it. Things go from bad to worse when a rival appears to challenge Cole for the princess's hand, and Cole comes to face to face with his mysterious behind the bar hottie ex Hex, the Prince of Halloween. In a it's a fake competition between the two holiday princesses princes who can't keep their hands off each other over a marriage of convenience that no one wants. All leads to one of the sweetest, sexiest, messiest, most delightfully unforgettable love stories of the year. This is a good, like, maybe holiday read. It gives Nightmare Before Christmas vibes, because it's, like, Christmas and Halloween. So, intrigued, intrigued to read. Next, I have Bindo Punk Cafe. This is the sequel to Bindo Punk Bruja, which, um, is about a witch who is not only a bruja, she is a um, salon, um, not salon, what is the word? Speak easy runner, she owns a club, and she's trying to fight the KKK, and, um, mafiosos all in the 20s, and, um, yeah, I enjoyed book one, I don't want to read the description of book two, because they usually spoil book one, but I am intrigued to see where this story goes, because book one ended fairly, like, wrapped up, I'm surprised there was a sequel, so I'm excited to see what happens in book two. Now, the last book I have is my Fairy Loop for the month. I do have two more Fairy Loop books that are supposed to be here for the month of October, but they have not gotten here yet. So, this is the only one that I've gotten, which is my YA box. I get the YA box and the Romantic C and Adult box um, combo. So, this is the YA box, and it is Air, which is the spinoff of the um, Amber in the Ashes Quartet um, by Sava Tihir. I won't read the description. I just know this takes place after. But look at that gorgeous cover. And then it's got gorgeous character art on the end papers. Is it on the same on both sides? We shall see. No, it is not. But this is one of the most gorgeous books that I've seen. Love, Legacy, Power, Vengeance. Um, very loop. <laughs> and then I have, uh, there's, um, came in the box, um, uh, pageways or whatever so I put those in and I don't know when I'll be reading this but I'm very excited to get to it so those are all the books I obtained in October let me know what you guys got this month um I think my most excited is either well I'm currently reading Phantasmal it'd be that but uh Legend of the White Snake would probably be right after it is like my most anticipated of to read of all these books I got also been a book of half I just I've already read book one but yeah that's what I'm excited to um, read out of what I got. What did you guys get? I post new videos every Friday. Um, I try to do sprints occasionally, and I will have something coming very soon, a interview, author interview with the author of and uh, The Cruel Thirst and Sinner's Isle and Juan Toya, which will be on the 19th of this month. So look out for that. Um, I will also say, remember, don't let them get rid of your light. Don't let them... Remember to find joy. That joy is a form of resistance. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.